Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt, and today I'll be teaching you how to script an intro GUI on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is come into the game, um, and as you see, we're prompted with this GUI right away. Um, it has our game name up top, a message to our players, and a play button. Um, and while we have this, we kind of have like an animation going in the background, just giving players a preview of our game. Um, and as soon as we click play, the GUI goes away, and we can play our game. Okay, so now that you know what the script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So the first thing we're going to do is create our intro GUI. Um, this is just going to be a screen GUI with a frame, a button, and two labels underneath of it. You could create it like I have here, or if you'd like, you can grab it from the description. I have a Roblox model link there, and um, it has everything shown in this video. Um, it's up to you, but I just created a little template here that you can use if you'd like. Um, and after we have our GUI created, we can actually get into scripting this. So I'm going to create a new script under replicated first. Um, and I'm going to name this intro script, but you could name this whatever you'd like. Um, and just real quick, the reason I'm creating it under replicated first is so this only runs one time. Normally, if we had a script under our GUI, it would run every time the player resets. Um, but for this system, we only want it to run one time. So that's why we're going to drop it under replicated first. Uh, the first thing I like to do inside of this script is grab a reference to the tween service. Um, and that just allows us to make different animations. So we're going to say local tween service equals game and we'll call the get service method and we're going to say tween service so we we'll have a reference to that to use later on for all of our different tweens and animations after this i have a couple of variables i'd like to set up the first one is going to be a reference to our player's camera so i'll say local camera equals game.workspace.current camera which will be the unique camera for every player um, and then I want to get reference to some of our GUI elements, just so that they're going to be easier to interact with later on. So I'll say local player GUI equals game.players.localPlayer, and we're going to wait for the player GUI to be created, just so that we're not running any code before we're able to, before we're able to interface with that GUI. I'll say local intro GUI, which is going to be this screen GUI right here, equals player GUI colon wait for child intro GUI. I'm gonna do the same thing for our intro frame equals intro GUI wait for child intro frame. And finally for our play button and for our title label. So I'll say title label equals intro frame colon wait for child title label. And I'll do the same thing for our play button. Equal play button equals intro frame wait for child play button all right that was a lot of variables to set up but i promise we're all done with variables for a little bit that was the majority of them okay so now that we have that set up we can actually start working with our camera as you saw in the little showcase whenever we join the game we do get this gui but we also have a little camera movement that's it and this is kind of to give like a preview of the map you know we want to give our players a taste of what the map's going to be like but not the whole thing so we have a camera movement we have a blur um, and of course we have our game name and our gui um, so to get started on the camera what i want to do is i'm going to make two parts under workspace the first one i'm going to name cam part one for camera part one and the second one I'm going to name cam part two. I found this is a really nice way to set up the system. Um, basically what's going to happen is when the player joins the game, their camera is going to be set to the position of this first camera part, and then it's going to be slowly animated and moved to the position of the second camera part. So instead of you know hard coding positions into our script, it's a lot easier just to make these different parts um, and then move the player's camera in between them. And then anytime we want to change, maybe if we have a map update or something, we can just move these parts. Um, and that's going to change kind of where our cutscene is located, where our camera is going to move between. Um, so I'm just going to set these parts, I'm going to set their size just to squares. Um, I'm going to set can collide to false and I'm going to make them transparent just so that our players can't see them in game. I'm going to move them up to give us a tiny preview of the map. Um, and I think it'd be nice if we move them a little bit far apart just so that the players have a little bit of space for a preview. Um, so that's going to be all we're going to do in workspace for this video. So I have our cam parts created. Um, and now we can set up two more variables. 
Um, the first one is going to be our camera animation time. So it's however long it's going to take for our camera to go between the positions of those two parts. So camera animation time, and I'm going to set that to 60 seconds. You could make that you know, slower or faster, um, but I found 60 is pretty good for you know a short distance. It'll make it slow enough, but not too fast. Um, and the next thing I'd like to set up is one more variable, and we're going to call this camera tween. Um, and we're going to get into this a little bit later on, but I just like to declare it up here just so we have access to it throughout our whole script. Okay, so after this, we can actually start you know, running some code. We're done with the variables, so we can run some code for our game. Um, so I'm gonna start by writing some camera code. Um, because the camera is just a little bit different from the rest of the script, I'm gonna separate it into its own function. Um, this is just gonna you know, create a little bit of a block within our script, just so we kind of are able to read it a little bit easier and see where our camera code is. So I'm gonna make a new function by saying function, and I'm gonna call it setupCamera two parens and press enter and I'm going to call that function right underneath it on line 17. So I'll say set up camera just like this and in here is going to be all the code that's going to deal with our camera and setting that up. So the first thing I'd like to do is wait for our camera to get loaded in. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to wait for our player's camera's position to change. So basically, when we join the game, Roblox has some core scripts that's going to move around our camera a little bit. Um, and as soon as that first movement happens, as soon as Roblox sets our camera position to our player, that's how we know the camera's loaded in. So we're going to wait for that to happen. So I'm going to say camera and say get property change signal which basically means wait for a property to be changed. And the property that I'd like to wait for is the C-frame property, which is position and rotation. Um, and I'd like to wait for that to be changed. So I'm gonna call the wait method on that. So I'm basically waiting until the camera's position gets changed. Um, and that's how we know that our camera is loaded in. After this, we can start moving our camera around. Um, in order to do that, we have to tell Roblox that we want to move our camera around. We have to basically tell them that we wanna script our camera. And the way we do that is just by setting the camera type property of our camera. So we'll say camera.camera type equals, and we want to set it to scriptable. So we'll say enum.camera type.scriptable. Um, and then we actually want to move our camera. We actually want to you know, position it. And the way we're going to do that is just set its position to the same position as the cam part one right here. We're going to get it ready to be moved across the map. So we'll say camera.c frame. Um, and I know that might be a little bit confusing. Honestly, I didn't know what C-Frame meant for the longest time. Um, all it's referring to is position and rotation. So if we were to rotate this part, basically it would make it so that the camera would follow the rotation as well as the position. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier for us. So we'll say camera.C-Frame, and we're gonna set that to this cam part one C-Frame. So we'll say equals game.workspace.cam part one dot C-Frame. Um, and so if we join the game, we can actually see that it's going to be set to that first, you know, initial part, um, which is going to be right over here. We just wait for it to load, just like this. So it's in that initial position of camp part one. And now what we want to do is actually tween our camera's position to that second camera part. Um, so we'll say camera tween. We're going to use that variable that we defined up here. And I'm going to set that to a new tween. So we're going to be using tween service a little bit in this video, so I just kind of want to explain how that works. Basically, a tween is just an animation. We're setting properties over time. Um, so basically, we can pass in like the amount of time that we want the property to change, for example, our C-frame, um, and it's going to slowly set that property um, as time passes on. So in order to do that, we're going to call the create method of tween service. So I'll say tween service, colon create. Um, we have a couple arguments in here. The first one is going to be the object that we like to animate, which is going to be our camera object. The second one is going to be a little bit of information about the tween. Um, in this case, we just want to pass in the time. So we're going to create a new tween info object by saying tween info dot new. Um, and we're going to pass in our camera animation time. Unfortunately, we already have a variable for that. So we can just drop that in. Um, and the last thing is a property table. Um, so this is just going to contain a bunch of properties that we'd like to change. Um, and in this case, all I want to change is one property. So don't get too worked up about that. It's just going to be one property. So we're going to set the C-frame property. So I'll say C-frame like this equals 
game.workspace.campart2.cframe. So basically this is saying at the end of the tween, what do we want the C frame to be equal to? And that's gonna be the C frame of our second camera part. So it's gonna move along throughout the tween. Um, and of course, we also want to play the tween. We don't just want to leave it, you know, as an object in our script. So I'll say camera tween and I'll call the play method on it. Um, and that's going to make it so our camera is going to slowly move along all the way to our second camera part until the player clicks play. Um, okay, so that's going to be everything we have to do with our camera, all the setup for that. Um, now what I'd like to work on is our blur. I mean, this is actually very simple. Um, it's a very really cool effect that we can add, and I think it just, you know, enhances the script a little bit. It gives the players a preview of the game, but it doesn't reveal everything. Maybe a little bit of mystery, which is kind of cool. Um, so I'll create a new variable called blur, and I'm going to set that equal to a new blur effect. So we're going to use the instance.new function, so we'll call it instance.new. Our first argument here is going to be what are we creating, where we're going to create a blur effect. And the second one is gonna be where are we creating that? And I wanna create that under lighting, which is this folder right here. We could always you know, just create a blur effect like this, um, but I think it's easier to do it through code and just cause we're gonna remove it later on. So we'll create it like that. Um, and I would also like to set the blur size. So I'm gonna set it to 12, um, but you could make this whatever you'd like, um, you know, just to give it the right feel for your game. After this, uh, I'd like to actually start working on our GUI. So that's pretty much all the camera and, and lighting stuff done. Now we can actually get to work on this interface right here. Um, so I'm gonna say intro frame dot visible equals true. So we're bringing up this GUI to start. And we wanna set the text of this title label right here to the name of our game. You could not include this line if you want, if you want to say custom text, but I think it's always cool to pull that you know, dynamically to populate that field. Um, so the way I'm gonna do that is by using marketplace service. So we'll say title label.text, and we're going to get the information about our game using the get product info method of marketplace service. So we'll say game the marketplace service, only get product info. And we're gonna say, what product are we getting info about? Well, that's gonna be our game, our, our places asset ID. So we'll say game.placeID. And this is gonna return you know, a table with a bunch of different info about our game, you know, title, description, icon, all this stuff. But all we need in this case for our title label text is gonna be the name. So we're gonna say dot name, and that'll return our place's name. All right, I know this is a lot, but we're almost finished, I promise. Now all we have to do is get whenever this play button is clicked, and then essentially we're just gonna undo everything we just did. We're gonna give the player control over their camera, we're gonna get rid of this GUI, um, we're gonna remove our blur, we're just undoing all of this code so that the player can actually play our game. So in order to get whenever the play button is clicked, I'm gonna use our uh, reference up here, I'll say play button, and I'm gonna hook into the mouse button one clicked event of play button. Um, so we'll connect that to a function. So whenever the play button is clicked, we're gonna run some code, whatever code is in here. Um, and when it's clicked, I'd like to get rid of the GUI. That's the first thing I wanna do. I wanna tween it upwards. Um, and the way we're gonna do that, we'll say local frame out tween. So say we're moving that frame out, we're moving this intro frame out. Um, we're gonna create a new tween just like we did up here. So we'll say tween service colon create. I'm gonna pass in the intro frame because that's the object we'd like to tween. Our tween info, and this time it's gonna have a little bit more. So we'll say tween info dot new. Of course, just as before, I'd like to have our time, which is gonna be 0 0.5, um, but I'd also like to pass in a little bit of styling information. Um, so basically it's just gonna give it that little bounce effect. Um, so I'll say, enum.easingstyle.back and the easing direction is gonna be enum.easingdirection.in um, and then finally we want to say what's the end property what are we actually tweening what's the what's the property that we're trying to set at the end of this tween and um, that's going to be the position because we want it to go down and then up and then way off the screen so we will create our table and we will say position equals and anytime we're doing position, we use udim2. So we'll say udim2.new. And we wanna set the position to halfway across the screen on the x-axis, so it's gonna be centered in the screen, zero for the offset. And then we wanna be all the way up and off the screen for our y-axis. So I'm gonna say negative one, which you know might even be a little bit too far, but we just want that way off the screen. Um, and once again, zero for our offset. Um, and just as we did up top, I'd like to play this tween. So we'll say, 
frame out tween colon play and I'd also like to wait this time for the tween to be completed. So before we move on to the rest of our code, I'd like to see once this tween is completed. So I'll say frame out tween, and I'm gonna hook into the completed event, and we're gonna wait for that to get fired. So whenever the tween is completed, we're gonna move on with our code. Okay, we only have a little bit more, I promise, very close to being done. Um, we're gonna get rid of our intro frame by making it invisible. So intro frame that visible equals false, so they can't see it anymore. We're gonna get rid of our blur by destroying it, calling the destroy method on the blur. Um, and now that's gonna be mostly everything. We're not gonna have you know, this intro frame right here. We're not gonna have a blur, but our camera is still gonna be moving along. So we have to find a way to kind of stop that animation and give our player control of the camera again. I and mean, I found the best way to do that is just to cancel our tween. So we're gonna grab our camera tween from up top and we're gonna just cancel that because that's going and that's just gonna stop that tween. And then we wanna give our players control again by setting the camera type, basically the exact reverse of what we did up here. So we'll say camera dot camera type equals enum dot camera type dot custom, which just gives control to the player again. Um, and that's really all there is for the script. We can head into the game to try it out real quick. Um, and as you'll see, as soon as we load in, our camera's position is set to that first part's position. Um, it'll just be moving along um, very slowly. We have a nice blur in the background, um, and the title is set to our game name. Um, and then as soon as we click play, the GUI goes up, the blur is destroyed, and the player has control over their character, and they can play the game. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the Paceman link with the code and the Roblox model link with all the assets shown in this video in the description, and I'll see you guys later.